Hey everyone, Coach Brown in here. I wanted to take a little moment to talk to everybody about uh, some of the challenges we're having in the protection industry. Uh, not just in the protection industry, but law enforcement as a whole. And as far as keeping kids safe, specific to child abuse, sexual exploitation, and things of that nature. Anyone who's, well, if you're new to who I am, international security training, production camp of Jiu Jitsu, little bit about me so that way you know the filter that I am speaking to everyone through. I was a corrections officer in the Army, military policeman in the Army. I worked in corrections in the civilian side. I've been an executive protection agent for many years. That is a bodyguard, if you're not familiar with uh, the other term. And as a self-defense instructor, every part of my career is kind of always geared towards the intent of keeping kids safe because I know what predators do. I know who they are. I know how they speak about the victims and their potential victims. And a lot of that was gained in the uh, corrections industry because you get to hear them speak in a relaxed manner. Um, so that's where I'm coming from. After I got out of the military, started working on the civilian side, we built up this little like charity conglomerate that we really focus on, right? So you got Thorn, uh, which is the company that really goes after digital aspects of these types of crimes, and they help law enforcement with that. You have the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children there. Hopefully you guys know about that. You have Save the Children. You have Child Help. In Phoenix, you have Streetlight USA. All these groups, well, actually, now they have Underground Operation Underground Railroad. So you've got all these great organizations trying to keep kids safe. And there is a group, a certain type of population in the United States that is growing at an alarming rate. And that group of people thinks and honestly believes inside that it is okay to commit these acts on kids. And they think it's more of a sexual preference than a crime. Uh, so that that is why. Sorry if you hear those military jets blowing overhead. In California, we have uh, a couple of proposals that came through. Right, you have um, SB one forty five. You have SB two fifty nine from a certain Democratic senator wanting to reduce the crimes and classifications of acts such as having sex with a minor as long as there is no more than a 10-year gap between the age of the offender and the victim. Uh, as long as the child is willing. So what does that mean? That means that as long as I can scare, groom, or intimidate the victim into saying to law enforcement that they are willing, that means I'm not going to be a felon. I don't have to register myself on the sex uh, offender registry. That is what the end result of that is, okay? You have um, the rapes of underage girls from folks like Jeffrey Epstein. Um, some of these things, man, they give me fucking nightmares, I tell you. And they keep me up because I can't... The times that I couldn't help people are involved in this stuff. So you have the Jeffrey Epsteins of the world and his secret millionaire billionaire clubs uh, and the power that they have in avoiding prosecution for dozens of years. Um, with Epstein's case, the local law enforcement went after him. The FBI went after him. And a U.S. district attorney squashed that case for the longest time. Uh, that should be alarming. Okay, So know that when you have higher level legal folks and politicians squashing that stuff, and then you have politicians trying to make these laws, um, like the ones I just mentioned out of California, minimizing the classifications of what they are. That's a scary, scary situation. Um, working as a bodyguard, uh, you know, in the entertainment industry, you see sexual assaults. Remember the Me Too movement, right? The Harvey Weinsteins of the world? That shit wasn't pretend made up or fake. Okay, picked up a little bit of steam, but as soon as it didn't meet a certain narrative's goals and objectives, they sure did squash that. And then I've got the former first lady 
introducing him, Harvey Weinstein, that is, at uh, the National Convention within the last month as a friend. Uh, pay attention to that, okay? So you have sexual predators who are accepted members of these groups because of the power that they hold, because of the things they can do for certain people. In professional sports, if anyone's worked in high-level security in that arena, you're going to see people that get away with sexual assault by paying off the victims. They have their professional fixers that work for their management teams. They come in, they take care of the problem, right? Why? Because the athletes are money for the owners, corporations, the advertisers, the money machine, right? Which is, I'm all for people making a buck. But once you start using your position in a way that makes you think you're above the law, or makes you want to cry victim when you finally get held in a fire for a little bit. I can't deal with that. So all these things, are, you know, it's fucking haunting me. You got sexual assaults, professional sports, and the entertainment industry. People claiming victim from these folks on one side, and then they go right over here and support politicians who have been the bad guys. I don't get that. And then recently... You've seen the show on Netflix come up, Cuties, um, which was uh, fucking terrible for me to watch. And I come from a military background, okay? I'm not this clean-cut, religious gung-ho guy that, you know, doesn't think sex should ever be talked about. Come on. Okay? I was enlisted to do the military. You send us naughty stuff, we're going to check it out. We like the ladies. I'm the one talking about Selma Hayek all the time, right? One of my dream uh, wives. But, you know, so it's, it's like a normal guy like me, probably, and the immature side of the house, came across that movie, and I saw the uh, commercial for that. Holy fuck. Sexualizing 11-year-olds. And uh, if we normalize that, and then we combine that with the laws that are coming out of California to reduce classifications of criminal acts against kids. We're fighting a losing fucking battle. We need people to pay attention to who we vote for. Who are we responsible for protecting? Don't vote for someone simply because of their sexual orientation. Because that makes you feel good inside, right? Oh, I want to vote for him because he's not straight or she's not straight. They're not of a certain color. They're not of a certain color. Everyone's trying to vote in order to make themselves feel good. But are you really doing good? We have to, uh, please consider helping out, number one, with voting, increasing the punishments and classifications for any type of sexual offenders. Uh, help out groups like Operation Underground Railroad. Thorn, Missing and Exploited Children, ChildHelp.org. If you're in Phoenix, Arizona, the Streetlight USA organization. Because fighting a losing battle, and a lot of people are starting to think that this is okay. And um, one of the worst patterns or trends I've seen in my career. So another thing to reconsider is how we react to police officers and their use of force issues that you might see on uh, the news or social media. First of all, you want to respond to those. Don't react emotionally. The way you respond is you wait until you have all the information. Okay. The reason why I say this is because in mean, professional sports has been terrible at this is when you see a perceived wrong, they automatically make, in this case, the bad guy, the subject, they try to turn him into a hero, a martyr, um, instead of focusing on previous victims. Okay? If you want to reduce excessive force issues with law enforcement, that's fine. Focus on that. But don't make a champion out of somebody who's been a criminal for their entire life because you're shitting on the victims. Okay? If you want to say George Floyd shouldn't have died during that arrest, you can say that. 
if you want to say that Jacob shouldn't have been shot seven times, Jacob Blake, say that. But don't put those names like those on your uniforms, on your helmets, on signs, on bridges. Imagine these guys have created victims their entire adult lives. That's what they do. Imagine being one of George Floyd's former victims and seeing entertainers hoist his paintings up, his signs, his names, say his name. Imagine being the victim. Jacob Blake. Imagine being his his most recent victim, the one who was the house that he actually went to, the girl that had the restraining order on him uh, for that charge of a sexual assault and all that. She's got to see this dude's name on a helmet. We know what kind of character he has. We know what kind of character George Floyd had. These are not nice people. These are not even law-abiding people. They've created victims. So it's okay to say that you disagree with the use of force that was used during an arrest. But what kind of society are we in these fucking sports players putting their names? That's like bringing PTSD, repetitive PTSD, to any of these victims that these guys have hurt in the past. Got to think about that, too. That's it for the rant. Take care.